to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Father, we give you all the praise. Let's lift our hands in one minute and just bless His name. We're going to pray for a few minutes and then um, I have a lot to do tonight. Father, bless you. Lift your voice and bless him. Ask him to bless you tonight. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we bless you. We're faithful. We honor you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. To you be all the glory in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray in tongues. Please hold your hands together. Please, guys, come up. You can come. Just hold the mic. Worship team, you can excuse them for a while. Um, Benga, come up. Promise we're going to pray very seriously in tongues. Remember, I told us we are pushing some things in the spirit. Praise the Lord. After we've praised, let's pray. There's still space. Kenny, Fanny, Pastor Alpha, come up. Let's just fill the mics. We're going to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to lift your voice. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Shout it again. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every stronghold attempting to stop prophecy from manifesting in my life. I challenge you right now. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, Shapaketo Pato to oppress me I plead the blood and I declare my liberty now lift your voice and pray Oh, my God. 
say after me in the name of Jesus the spirit of ancestry and the covenants of the fathers affecting my lineage and wanting to affect my life I decree and declare I've been called out of every tribe every tongue every nation release me now release my destiny lift your voice and pray release me in the name of Jesus the ordinances of darkness the spirit of ancestry Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. The spirit of hardship, the spirit of a hard life. I decree and declare that the Lord judges you over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The spirit of a hard life, the spirit of hardship, a hard life. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every force of darkness sitting on my glory, stopping it from manifesting. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and prophesy. I command my life to shine. I command my life to shine. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. I decree and declare, it's my season of triumph. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. One more time in the name of Jesus. Every force stopping my helpers from reaching me through bad reports through divination through misguided reports I command in the name of Jesus that the Lord is against you release my helpers to my destiny lift your voice and pray please pray whether you understand what you are praying or not pray open your mouth and pray Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yet the set time, the set time, set time, the set time. Hallelujah. I like you to pray this one with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit. 
every spirit that makes men trivialize my giftings that make men trivialize the anointing on my life that makes men trivialize what God is doing to me I come against you right now in the name of Jesus it's my season of celebration lift your voice and prophesy the spirit that causes men to trivialize what you represent to trivialize what God is doing in your life Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, everything that should be in my life now and was hijacked by the enemy, I place a demand in the name of Jesus. Locate my destiny now. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, lift your voice and pray. Like the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, I command let bones be joined to bones. Opportunity joined to opportunity. Favor joined to favor. Say after me in the name of Jesus Every force of darkness Programmed to kill my prayer life Programmed to kill my passion for God Programmed to kill my appetite for the world I come against you right now Lift your voice and redeem your prayer life Lift your voice and redeem your, your world life Hallelujah. Everyone will pray this, but the brothers, I want you to pray this. Praise the Lord. Brothers, when we raise this prayer and I see any brother looking at me and you are not praying, I walk up to you and hold your hand. It's a serious prayer. Say in the name of Jesus, the grace for speedy establishment, Lord, release it upon my life. Lift your voice and pray. The grace that causes men to be established on time. There is a cause of darkness that causes men to be established late. At 40, you are still in your father's house. At 40, you are still living from hand to mouth. It's a cause. Please pray. Please help us on the devil. Establish me. Send me help from Zion. Establish me on time, on time, on time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone pray this, but I want our sisters to pray this with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. 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 The spirit of unnecessary lateness. The spirit of unnecessary lateness. 
lateness in life financial lateness i curse you in the name of jesus lift your voice and pray it should happen on time it should happen on time there is a time allocated every time is not convenient there is a time allocated name of Jesus in the name of Jesus father, father I know it is within your power to, turn, power. My to turn my life around I ask you in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus turn my life around my life. lift your voice and pray change my story turn my life around pray pray do a new thing do a new thing what has not been done before not the same kind of miracle not the same kind of breakthrough do a new thing something that has never happened before Let me add this one more prayer. He says, Son of man, can this bone live again? And the prophet said, Honestly, I've been a prophet. Oh, prophesying is not something that is new, but this for this case, I don't know. And then he said, Prophesy. He didn't say discuss, he didn't say cry. In one minute, I'm not going to tell you what to say, but I want you to stand and look at your destiny. I want you to prophesy, carry the word of God like a drug, put it on your destiny. My destiny, I speak to you. You are alive, hear the word of the Lord. I command you to rise. I command you to grow. I program favor in you. Pray. I program breakthrough in you. Manifestation of the word of God. You are a manifestation of the faith of God. You are the manifestation of the goodness of God. I take away pain from my destiny. I take away regrets from my destiny. I take away sorrow from my destiny. I prophesy goodness. I prophesy joy unspeakable, full of glory.
Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. You sit down shortly, lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, you have prayed. I decree over your life. The Lord has declared that this is the year of triumph. We are angry and we are insisting that it must happen. Therefore, I decree and I declare that if there is anyone under the sound of my voice, under any kind of siege, that will not let you see the faithfulness of God, I decree and I declare right now, that power leaves your life right now. That force leaves your life right now. Hallelujah. We're about to listen to the word. While your hands are lifted, I want to do an impartation of understanding. Listen. Most people think they know, they understand scripture. It's not true. I decree and I declare, I stretch my hands towards you. May the spirit of understanding, capacity to comprehend the systems of the kingdom, I release it upon you right now. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. I open your understanding. I open your understanding. I open your understanding. I command your mind to be receptive. I decree that your spirit will beat the signal in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. God bless you. Good evening. Brothers and sisters, the weeks that are coming will really mean business. You know, I've been saying this. I know it in my spirit when a reality has been declared to manifest from the realm of the heavens. But you know that it is not yet your experience. There is no believer who sits down knowing what God has ordained for your life and watching the enemy play games with your life and you sit down and hope things will change no sir you have to engage with understanding engage with understanding until that which is yours comes to you the bible says right from the days of john the baptist and until now it says the kingdom suffered violent and the violent the violent spiritually violent those who will insist and say, I'm not taking anything less than this promise of God's word. They are the ones who take it by force. I am passionate about results. I never, never associate with anything that does not have capacity to produce results. I am a result-driven person. This is a result-driven ministry. The fierceness of life does not allow for stories and grammar. People want real results in their lives. And let me tell you this. If you're a man of God here, listen to me. No matter what you claim to be doing, if it does not translate into genuine results, you are wasting people's time. It's as simple as that. Herein is our Father glorified. 15 verse 8, John hearing this is how god takes glory from men when ye bear much fruit when your results are notable beyond argument notable beyond sentiment he said by so doing you will prove that you are my disciples you will prove that you have sat down under my mentorship and tutelage your results validate the efficacy of the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit when our lives are barren of certain dimensions of results it's an indictment on the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit results that defy background results that defy the expectations of naysayers and men and women who look forward to your failure as their self-fulfilling prophecy 
but you must contend for it hallelujah i've been thinking you know i've been thinking about you all through the week my mind has just been lord there are dimensions that we must enter before the end of this year the word of god will not go void when god speaks it is within his power to make it happen are we together but it is always been a partnership it's always been that way that the heavens must partner with the earth for realities to be established here and so my assignment is to scan through and make sure that we tie every loose end that can force or that can can sabotage this prophecy from finding expression my job is to search and find out and to remind us and indoctrinate us with the truths that are capable of bringing results results that are predictable results that are consistent results that have nothing to do with the wishes of men hearing is our father glorified hearing if you have ever wondered how god takes glory from men this is how it happens when you bear much fruit much fruit much fruit not little fruit much fruit when results become um become notable notable and consistent it will compel any force of darkness regardless of sentiment to know that the hand of god is upon your life hallelujah every dimension in the spirit has a price every level every dimension of greatness has a price and by the grace of god he has granted us this privilege as a ministry to laboriously open god's people to the demands the price requirement the cost dimension of certain results that we need i am passionate about connecting people's desires to the formula and the principles that have been designed for those outcomes to manifest it is one thing if you can tell me what you want if you can tell me what you desire i can show you the mystery that is allocated for that result there is a price i wish everything were would just happen without your cooperation but that's not the way the system of god works there is a price the price we are talking about is the price of alignment the price of partnership because you see the operation of the system of the kingdom as we have learned is such that it comes by grace but it says through faith they are not the same thing by grace made available through faith the summation of your partnership that causes that reality that is available grace makes it available it creates the possibility but your engaging the word accordingly makes it your experience grace does not make it your experience grace opens it up it lets you know that this is a possibility contained in god i've shared it with you that the grace of god is not redemption no redemption is a subset of god's grace god's grace is a generic description of any and everything that only god can provide it's called his grace so the anointing is god's grace his mercy is a dimension of his grace his love is a dimension of his grace any possibility that should be the experience of men that can only be provided for by god is his grace grace never makes it your experience it creates the potential for redemption for healing for blessing for increase for multiplication but then it takes faith 
and most people have thought that the only aspect of faith is to believe and confess no sir mm -mm. Mm -mm. no that's only an aspect of faith faith is a generic name given to everything that involves the partnership of man the first key to partnership is finding out the formula god has provided for receiving that miracle understanding it by the help of the spirit and then taking relevant steps in accordance to what he has said this is what the bible calls faith believing is only an aspect of faith confessing is only an aspect of faith that's not all there is to it if you stop there you will be in total shock you can believe that prosperity is your heritage you can confess it is your heritage and stop and don't engage the other forces and you will remain in poverty and penury forever you can believe is God's desire for you to be great listen carefully you can confess that it is God's desire for you to be great and not engage the other forces of greatness value relationships skill and find out you never ask are we together now yes so when we learn the systems of the kingdom we are bringing ourselves to the point of faith where we are able to act with understanding and intelligence it is only when our obedience is complete that we commit god's integrity and then he is compelled to make it happen this is how angels work angels don't work at random angels signify things revelations 1 verse 1 the bible says the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto his servant john he said and he sent it and signified it by his angel angels act in accordance to understanding their action accredits that you are doing something right so they don't just act at random just because they are there no there is what to do that engages them because they are governed they are supervised by the holy spirit it is the office of the holy spirit that supervises the operation of angels they don't just move anyhow and do everything that your eyes are open in the realm of the spirit and you see them near you is no guarantee they will rescue you hallelujah is god speaking to us and so we must find out the things that we need to understand to help us excel brothers and sisters god sees my heart and how much passion that i have to see every one of us rise i will share with us a few things most of them recaps so that we reevaluate whether we have been practicing these things and then we'll pray are you ready hmm. the first price for doing business with god and making any name and anything that is sustainable on earth please write it down if there is a title for this thing i will call it the price wherever we stop i'm i'm re we are going back to the laws the systems of the kingdom there is no other way to get results than a comprehension a working knowledge and understanding of the systems of the kingdom alongside how we are to engage them this is how results are produced the first price is the price of intimacy the price of intimacy the price of intimacy make a mark in the sand of time god's way if you are unwilling to pay the price to know god the price of intimacy is not the price of praying in tongues it's not just the price of fasting it's the price to know god the price to know god the price to know god write it down the price of intimacy is the requirement that causes a man to have a relationship with god Daniel 11 verse 32 
Thank you, Jesus. He says, but the people that do know, know, the word know there, you've heard me say it again and again, it's not just the word aware. That you are aware God exists does not mean you know him. Are we together now? Pastor Alpha knows me. Pastor Femi knows me. Correct? Promise knows me. Kenny, they know me. But I'm not sure any of them know me as much as a Jimmy. Why? Because we have spent more time. There are many things that have brought us closer. And every one of them can only enjoy their confidence about me is based on their knowledge. Please listen. The foundation for your confidence in the kingdom is not just bold face for nothing. It is the knowledge of God. The Bible says, it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not, um, how did he put it now? Let not, let not the strong man glory in his strength. But it says, let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. The foundation, as I'm saying it now, please, I want you to check your life. There are many hustlers in life. They like money, but they hate God. They like what God can give, but they hate him. They like church. They love miracles. They love anointing. They love signs and wonders, but they hate God. They like seed sowing and harvest, but they hate God. Please come, Pastor Alpha. Let me tell you something. I can come to your house and like your bed. Your bed is not you. Correct? I can like your kitchen. I can like your food. I can like your suit. I can like your tie. Huh? I can like your children. I can like your car. All those things are related to you, but they are not you. Anointing is not God. Miracles is not God. Hear me, oh. Breakthrough is not God. Fasting is not God. Prayer is not God. Bible study is not God. God is a person who can be known. You can hang around activities that are related to him and convince yourself that because you have actively participated in activities that relate to God, it means you know him. This is the pride of African men. We claim I was born in so 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 time this baptistry we were the ones who dedicated it the first communicants we are the ones who laid hands on them when reinhard bonke came we were the ones who set the canopy and we add all those spiritual accolades to equal knowing god no sir no sir no sir knowing the things of god and knowing god are two different things the Bible never said but the people who come to church. It never said but the people who drop their tithes and offering. It never said the people who are ordained into ministry. Please listen carefully. We are examining the foundation for our results. You learn principles without an encounter with God. You are just learning jargons. As powerful as principles are. Principles are a derivative of a relationship with a person. Are we together now? Yes. You can know about me by reading my books, but you know me by meeting me. My book is supposed to create an appetite for encounter. Here's what the Bible says. It says, ye search the scriptures. You search the scriptures because you think in them by themselves you will find life. He said those scriptures testify of me. That means reading the Bible should stimulate you to want to meet a person much more than opening the bible zodiac books can be open and you can read scientology and all kinds of books can be open but if you're reading the book does not translate to meeting a person you will never be great in life but the people that do know their god show me a man who is willing to go through the price of intimacy i don't care whether he went to school or not 
I don't care whether he came from what background. Show me a man. He may be an orphan. Oh, goodness. What relationship with the Holy Spirit can bring to a man? Brothers and sisters, he can pick a weak person. A weak person. A weak lady. No father, no mother. No opportunity for a great life. But that you are stupid enough to say, Spirit of the living God, you represent the presence of Jesus. I am willing. I am willing. Like a little child will run to the father. I'm clueless about my life and destiny. I don't know where I'm coming from. I don't know where I'm going to. I don't have an idea of what life is about. But all I want is you. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you. Listen. Life will challenge your knowledge of God. You can know God as a theory. One day. The reason why many believers give up just like some of you now. Let me tell you the mystery of tiredness and living God is because there was no encounter in the first place let's be careful the kind of believers we are producing in church i know when i talk like this people think i'm just being sarcastic no i love the body of christ but we need to re-examine the quality of the harvest we are bringing because we are bringing believers who don't know god they don't care about god they have zero passion for the things of god they will tell you, I'm not called into ministry. God has called me into business. In other words, keep all that one to the business people. Whoever told you knowing God was for pastors? Whoever told you knowing God was for men of God and their wives and their children? But the people that do know their God. You want a harvest of strength? You want a life of exploits and triumph? The first prize is to know God I can pray for you but I can't know God for you you can benefit from my relationship but brothers and sisters everybody will stand before that Red Sea whether you are married when you get to the Red Sea pastor you will stand there and your wife will stand before her Red Sea it is her faith that will bring her victory you can't intercede for people indefinitely forever no sir are we together but the people who do know their god i talk to pastors and they tell me apostle how do you manage criticism how you do you manage this you know people who like me don't no longer like me and i look at them i say oh dear you are just like a patient comes to tell the doctor and says look i've been purging i've been coughing and while he's talking the doctor is seeing symptoms of cholera are you seeing that now that's the same way do you know most of our lamentations are a window into something that is wrong most likely we don't know god most likely hmm. that's why you can say father i i thank you i know you will bless me but lord if you don't bless me anything i do oh, that's your cup of tea that kind of talk is a revelation that there is no encounter because when you know god he infects you like a virus. You come to a point where you say, Lord, seeking you for results is over forever. I seek you first for who you are. Results or no results, I'm stuck with you. I'm stuck with you. It's a salt covenant. I'm stuck with you forever. Are we together? Everybody say the price of intimacy say it say the price of intimacy can you boldly stand please i want you to listen to my message knowing god experientially it's a powerful message knowing god experientially teaches you the system of knowing god let me tell you how god causes men to know him he introduces himself to people and his dimensions in the presence of their challenges and predicaments only challenges can help men know God. There's no other way to know him. The names of God scattered in the Bible 
were a revelation of him in the presence of certain challenges most people know god as healer just because they saw benny him praying or they came for miracle service but the day you stand face to face with a doctor's report that says look madam um i'm sorry to tell you this but it's not like you may not give birth you cannot give birth we have done the scan and we realize that you don't even have a womb he says sorry come again he say look i'm a consultant so you are not talking to a stupid person there is no womb at that point you go back and say god is this not your word let me tell you what it will do to you challenges shake us up all of a sudden and make god serious you know that there is a way you can be trivializing god but then certain challenges just shake you ordinarily you will not wake up by 2 a.m in the night but the reality of what has confronted you forces you to wake up you don't need alarm clock you don't need lipton you don't need coffee the pressure and all of a sudden you pray let me tell you something after nine months when you hold that child you are not holding a child you are holding a testimony other people are dancing over a child you are dancing over a testimony so the day they prophesy and say may the god that can open up a door in one year open your door other people are saying amen the moment let me tell you how you receive things in the spirit yes you receive by faith but your past experiences with god help you to receive the newer things he's bringing god looks for something he has done in your life before and connects it to what you are trusting him for are we together when david was fighting goliath remember he drew from the archives of god's faithfulness do you have a name you have given god based on something only you and him know or are you just reciting the names that you read in the bible rafa jire pastor there is a name you call your wife it's none of my business it's none of our business that is a product of intimacy there is a name you call somebody when you are angry there is a name you call somebody when the times are good there is a even as friends is that true what is the name of god that is a product of your knowing him what name did you give him is there a secret name that every time you call god says i know this voice uh -uh. no one else calls me this name when pastor alpha's wife hears him calling that name he can't mistake it she can't be mistaking it for me even if i know the name it won't sound like that there is a mystery behind the name there is a way when people in the bible said rafa there were too many stories that came to their mind but today you say rafa your mind is blank no experience to connect to rafa oh jehovah jireh as abraham abraham knows jehovah jireh but we sing it jehovah jireh my provider and we jump around and there is no revelation that connects that that's why africa has resorted to calling him names in their languages because they found out that it, it has it can help when that gentleman was calling whatever he was saying i was happy because he was not just reciting a poem a name that relates to your pain you don't survive an accident and call god jire you call him the deliverer the deliverer so when somebody sees you say how oh, the deliverer is here they say ah, in a prosperity convention say mr man is the dimension of god that was revealed to me that i keep calling what is the name what is the name we've had our fathers call god names that were strange to us we copied it but it's time for us to have a genuine encounter genuine encounter the price of intimacy koinonia please listen to me no level of business acumen no level of education can cover the gap that intimacy was meant to cover but the people that do know their god if you're a pastor please don't do ministry without knowing god you will die like a chicken you will sit down one day on the stage and start crying and the people ask you what is going you say i, I don't know
the price of intimacy there are certain things about intimacy i want us to understand number one please i'm taking out time to just i want us to understand this thing intimacy takes time you cannot know a man a woman you are willing to spend time with no sir intimacy is a product of time you don't give god five minutes and get benny hins encounter please god is not that cheap my brother my sister listen to me you need to spend time he must mean a lot to you number two god must become priority to have intimacy with him the bible says don't cast your pearl before swine i've said it you don't come to someone's house and then he takes you to his bedroom shows you where he keeps money no sir when you come sometimes you will even stand at the gate sometimes you will enter and stay inside sometimes you will stay at the parlor you will not even have access to the kitchen but there are certain people while all that is happening the child can run and even enter the bedroom the price for intimacy i look at the lives of people believers yes we are born again yes we are filled with the holy spirit but when i look at our lives i don't see priority passion for god is contagious when a brother likes a lady no matter how he tries to hide it his roommate will know is that true the roommate will say you just spoke to five people but this sixth person the joy at which you used to call that lady this joy is not natural correct you are hugging everybody after service and then the way you hug that lady the brother said this hug is too generous for just brotherly kindness no what is there's more to this i say it's true i've been looking at her passion passion has a presence don't lie to us that you love god when we cannot see the passion Passion has a presence. I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. All I want is you. I hunger and thirst for you. I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. For all I want. The third key I'm sharing with you for intimacy to be established, one is you must be ready to invest your time. You give God five minutes of your time, you get five minutes worth of knowledge. Second is priority. Third is your willingness to lay down ha. The, the bible calls it the power to lay down this is where some of you will not like me now this is where many believers will not like me now because our generation has been indoctrinated that you can eat your cake and have it no sir go and ask anybody even an occultist you don't eat your cake and have it you cannot know god without a sacrifice i'm not talking money a sacrifice fasting is a sacrifice prayer is a sacrifice are we together studying the bible is a sacrifice we don't like this language at all yet we want power we want results sacrifice there are times that on account of your intimacy with god you just want to eat and the word of the lord comes to you Go on a three-day fast. Oh God, which breakthrough is coming now? God said, this is not issue of breakthrough. You are about, I'm about to reveal, I'm about to open you up to certain encounters. And I said, God, this is not flamboyant enough. If that you told me that I, after these three days fast, land will manifest from anywhere and come. It's a worthy investment to fast. But wh why will I fast to know you? What is the big deal about you? When I'm looking for land, and God will say, you see it. You see your heart. 
Pastor Alpha, hold my hands again. Everybody says sacrifice. I am amazed at the difficulty that believers go through to lay down the slightest thing. Slightest thing. So this suit, you discuss with God for one year before it leaves. You are carnal and you don't love him. It's the truth. Empty your account. I curse that, that devil. You argue for two years first and finish the money till 10,000. I say, God, I will lay it down. God says, just leave. I will tell you when to do it again. Are you willing to lay down? Jesus said, I have the power to lay down. Let me show you maturity in the spirit. When a man has gotten to a point where there is nothing you cannot lay down. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Many of us will agree to fast for 400 days than to lay down something for him. Everybody say sacrifice. 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 When God makes that demand and you are willing to sacrifice, you will know him. Let me tell you, I submit to you with all humility. This man standing before you is a testimony of sacrifice. Ask God, there is nothing I cannot lay down for him. Oh, it's a joke. Before he finishes talking, it will go. I have exercised myself to see the vanity of anything outside of God. You must lay down. The Bible says, love not the world. Usually, it's those who hate money that preach that message. No. It's all those who are poor and broke. They preach it as a consolation to their poverty. No, sir. You should not preach that message until you are really rich. Love not the world or the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, he didn't say don't have those things. An affinity to it. God gave you a car and the car took his place. God gave you a wife and the wife took his place. God gave you children, they took his place. God gave you a, a job paying six figures and he lost you in that job. Is God speaking to someone here? God increased your CGPA and that's the end of it. God connected you to a good brother, a good sister. God gave you a business idea and with that idea, he lost you. No, sir. No, sir. Sacrifice. The Lord for as long as I live in life and in death you remain my priority and that if need be I will lay aside anything if God tells me lay aside koinonia now brothers and sisters is with tears we hold the last valedictory service I will hold the last service I don't care what prophet comes from where and says apostle I think you are not hearing God well I will apologize when God changes his mind but for now koinonia closed Apostle, what do you do with the life you are blessing? I don't know. Ask the one who sent me. But Koinonia closed. There is a way you can do ministry. You have carried your reputation and your life and added to it. When God says shift left, God says, and then leave me where? Are we together? I want you to look at your life now. Let me show you why money is not coming to your life. Leave, leave business we are coming there but we are examining why there are some of us regardless of our prayer satan enters our life anyhow do you know why because the lust in your heart needs to be purged beyond imagination your attachment to things you god would dare not make a demand of anything what sort of thing is that who gave you the life many of you would have noticed that from august August till now, I'm not sure I've gone from over four ministrations. Cancelled almost everything. It's just been maybe one or two ministrations per month and the rest. Very unusual because that's the instruction God gave. And I said, that's it. Let me tell you, there are certain people that I would have wanted to be in their meetings with all my heart. But I love God. There's nothing I know that moves the heart of God than him seeing something you ordinarily love, but you say, Lord, it is for you. He says, that's it. This is what I'm looking for. If this handkerchief is five naira, and I tell you, I brought this handkerchief from the UK, 
Are we together? I bought it, whatever amount, one pound, and I carried it from the UK. And I brought, they wanted to collect it, but I hid it back. Immigration wanted to harass me, but I said, this is for you. If I give you, will you give somebody for 1,000? It's not about, the sacrifice have increased the value of it. There is no rising in the spirit when you are holding on to everything. Jealousy, anger, huh? all kinds of things. Please, let's re-examine these things. If we really want results, God declared that it's a year of triumph, but it's your heart with him. It's your heart with him. Apostle, all I want is just pray for me. Let a husband come. Keep quiet, oh sister, and listen to what I'm telling you because... It's not just the issue of pray for husband. God has already seen the wickedness in your heart. And God is saying, no way. You must love me first before I carry my son that I've labored on to carry and give you. Oh God, just bless me. I need to be a millionaire. I've seen this thing in my dream. And God said, if you don't listen to my servant, you will, it will remain in the dream there. It takes hunger for God. How many people have made money and left God. Have you seen people like that? Anybody that says money does not give you an option is a poor and a broke person who doesn't know anything about money. Because when you have money, there are few things you will pray about. Correct? Many prayer requests are tied to finances. And let me be honest with you, there is a level in your life that you get to where you don't think about money again. You may not have everything. But you get to a point where all your basic needs can be met to the degree you want them to be met. At that point, that's how you see how carnal and mundane your heart is. Because there's nothing else. I understand praying for six hours because of the emergency that is on you. But when his majesty has lifted your life beyond certain realms, that's when you will know and prove whether he's really Lord in your life. My number one prayer to God every time is so God for as long as I live may nothing win my heart so much enough to be able to push you and say God wait behind just because a door of ministry was open wait behind oh God Benny Hinn is calling me wait behind Billy Graham gave me the privilege to see him before he dies wait behind Bill Gates just called me and he said he wants to bless a man of God on earth and favor located me. No, sir. No, sir. Lord, make me your priority. Make me your priority. Make me your priority. This was the secret of David. Make me your priority. Priority means you mean the world to me. You mean the world to me. Brothers and sisters, get my passion for God. I pray that God will, will, whatever it is that God did to me, I pray that it will happen to you. Because if truly speaking, you want to do business with God, you must love him beyond things. Things. Beyond things. Beyond things. I love him with all my heart. I love him. My heart is open before him. He's the God of my salvation. I love him with all my heart. I will lay down anything for him. Anything. Anything. I really mean it. I really mean it. Don't think I'm just talking. I fear God. I will lay down anything. Reputation, nonsense. If you can lay down anything in his presence and go down on your knees, and say, Lord, this is for you. I lay down my pride. I lay down my achievement. Oh, I have a PhD in so, 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 and so. Just calm down first. Oh. Lord, I hand it over to you. There's nothing God loves like surrender. 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 It's yours. That's a language that is music to his ears. The anointing, Lord, you gave me is yours. The grace you gave me is yours. And while people are clapping for you in the open, Apostle Joshua Selman, you come before him and say, Lord, without you, I can go nowhere else. Say, Apostle, tell the truth. As anointed as you are, without you. Hmm. The wife of David looked at him 
and said you are dancing you are you are you are misrepresenting yourself you don't know you are a king before god and david said me you don't know my track record with this god i've told god one day to me leaving you please if it means me taking my life let it be that i didn't finish my assignment but that you remain my priority i surrender all everything i give to you i'm withholding nothing listen to the song before you sing it lord i surrender to you everything i give to you i'm withholding nothing listen the key to dying killing your reputation and the the key to entering your rest is to hand over your life to god i don't have any reputation no brothers and sisters my reputation is god you know there are times that sometimes i chat with the media people and they tell me you know someone all these people that write all kinds of things sometimes they send mails sometimes sarcasm people say all kinds of things i say apostle your reputation and i laugh i say ah reputation died since when if i had a reputation of my own wouldn't i be under pressure right now let me tell you what is causing stress the fight to protect our reputation that's it so that people will not think i'm poor let me prove a point and god is saying what point come on to me come on to me i need people to know that me i'm not i'm not just a i'm not i'm not a poor man i i need to go and buy a trouser and god says no i am your reputation i am your inheritance listen let me teach you people the secret of rest there are many pastors wearing themselves out i need crowd so that they will know that me too i'm anointed if if a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from god i learned to rest in him he truly is my rest <laughs> it's my rest that's why the ministry has been designed in such a way that whether i'm here or not god will be glorified it can't be around me no sir if i die now god forbid ah yes you will just cry for seven days you will try to pray and raise me back to life maybe two or three days after three days i guarantee you'll be tired small and you just say to what do we do they say let's just give god praise somebody will have a dream and see me say please bury me jerry and leave me in peace ah but he said you will not die while you are talking all that nonsense i'm in heaven happy and rejoicing and looking at you and saying instead of crying for me you better go and listen to my messages and make a meaning out of your life for for me to live is christ but to die is gain look at the stress that is killing you is it not because of ego talk to me 90 percent of the depression that is killing us in this life is an attempt to protect our image we say i need to guard my image what nonsense image ask a man who built an image that got smashed into pieces he built 90 feet of his image protected by bowing down god says no but those who enter the fire to protect the image of god god says i come to protect you brothers and sisters i give you an advice carry your reputation like a sacrifice hand it over to god and enter your rest this night this is a deliverance for someone now is that true yes the forty thousand house rent is killing you you don't have the money but to go and meet your friend and squat you are saying no i need them to know please enter your rest pack out of that place and go and give yourself peace instead of dying to maintain your reputation they've been seeing me wearing only one shoe i need to get another one nobody has been seeing you people have their problems it is your it is your your the punishment that comes from not handing over everything to god 
I like you to pray as you are seated and say, Lord, I am tired of carrying a load you told me to give you. I hand it over. Apostle, but people are always asking me, when will I marry? It will kill you. Don't let depression kill you. Hand everything over to God and enter your Sabbath. Enter your rest. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him from God. Pray, Lord, make me your priority. I'm willing to commit time to knowing you. I'm willing to commit to surrender everything and make you a priority. This obsession I have for marriage, this obsession for children, this obsession for job, this obsession for power, this obsession for ministry and rema and miracles is taking your place. Return back to your throne, oh God. If this is all I share tonight, it's worth it. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? That's my testimony. If you left you were. Listen, where would I be if he left me? This song means a lot to me because you see, brothers and sisters, he is the invisible force behind men who command results. You don't see him, you only see them. So chances are that they are the ones who you can shake. They are the ones who you can sow to. But every great man knows that behind him is an invisible and mighty God. Unmovable. I may shake, but he's unmovable, unshakable. But the people that do know their God shall defy status quo. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. The first prize while revisiting the mysteries that make for greatness. Brothers and sisters, let's return to the place of intimacy. Let's return to the place of intimacy. This is a call. Return to the place of intimacy. Spend time with God. Draw strength from Him. Talk to Him. Don't hide anything from Him. Open your all to Him. It will be foolish and silly to hide anything from him. Everything. Carry your pain. Carry your tears. Learn to spend time with God alone. Hold on please. There are some of you, as I look at you, you don't yet have the passion for God to go on a personal retreat. No. No. You are churchy, you love God, you don't drink, you don't steal, you don't womanize, you don't follow men, but you don't love God. You can't go by yourself and lock your house and say, please, I need to spend time. Some of you, the last time you did this was a long time ago. Ministry, it is place in your life. Listen, you must learn the power of retreating. Even if it's just for a day, do it. Lock yourself. Lord, I come before you. You are the God of my strength. I am open and naked before you. These are my crowns. These are my pains. I bring them before you. And you fellowship with him. And he talks to you. Ah, my son, I love you. Correct this. Add this to your life. I'm introducing this. Begin to see things this way. And you come out of there with fire and grace. And people look at you and your life is an unending compendium of wonder. Wonder unfolding. When a man gasses out, it's a sign that he has left the secret place in a long time. Freshness is one of the characteristics of the secret place.
look at me whether you are working class or you are a student you are a father you are a mother you are a husband or a wife i'd like you to write it if you are writing i must create time alone underline alone with god mog create time more with god because all you have to serve the people is what you receive in the secret thank you jesus that's how it works you want to experience a, a life of unending victory it starts that way it starts that way it always starts with him not principles we're coming to principles but him not just an encounter an encounter can be a one-time experience but intimacy is fellowship is partnership staying remaining with him where he becomes your priority sister a brother comes into your life and meets you madly in love with god he won't do any how to you like that because he met when he meets you idol a idol carelessly moving around waiting for a man that's when he does everything for you he comes to find you in worship can we see by this time oh i would love to but i, I need to spend some time with god ah, which god so, well that's that's what i do ah, by yourself you are behaving as if you're a child and you, you just see that as a sign from god that this is going to be a wicked husband you don't need to go and ask god again whether he's the will of god god answered you dear your passion forced an answer from him are we together i love god i love jesus i love him i like you to pray and say lord help me love you help me love you genuinely the price of intimacy the price of intimacy the price of intimacy let no westernization preach you out of this my brother my sister the price of intimacy let education not preach you out of this let a job let money let marriage let children not preach you out of this way before ministry was he was and he is and will ever be in the beginning God in the beginning God in the beginning God I must become alpha and no man of your life for anything in between to make sense please pray Oh, I re I reestablish my covenant of intimacy. For Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Yes, you are the cup that will run dry. Other things may run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Not in my life. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Hold on. It's impossible to marry a bad woman when your heart is connected to God. You attract what looks like you. You leave God and you are doing all kinds of rubbish. The devil will bring Jezebel to your life that will tear your head and tear your anointing into pieces. It's impossible to marry a bad man. All these men that drive you to church, they leave you somewhere. Sisters, I'm talking to you. They all go and do koinonia. Pray for us, oh Mother Teresa. As soon as they are rounding up, they are there by that place where they are selling something. They are waiting for you. They pick you and say, I love you. Nonsense. Let me deliver you now. If there are such kind of people in your life, you better send them a text and tell them, get out of my life so that God himself will bring my husband or my wife hallelujah anybody that hates your god and likes you is a liar no sir you come under my roof you serve what i'm serving you serve who i'm serving you can't be under my roof and have your own rules no sir
it is from your intimacy you will raise your children you can't give what you don't have it is from your intimacy as a pastor let me tell you when you love god and you hunger after him that fire con the people catch that fire and they love god too you tell people to fast you are eating secretly you buy fish you buy yam you buy whatever people are laboring and they are fasting you will eat and belt and dress and come and round up the meeting intimacy intimacy i'd like you to think in one minute what is that one thing that is currently fighting the position of god in my life think don't pray think what is it what is that one thing that if god makes a demand now honestly i can't give it what is it some of us is our reputation i keep talking about this reputation my class I am this, I am that, the power of my hand. Hi. I have seen mighty people fall like a leaf overnight because God, they ignored God's assistance in their life. You can be a CEO of XYZ today and be a billionaire and crash back to zero. Is God waking somebody up today? Please return to the secret place. Return to the place where he is priority. Return to the age long and age old mystery of retreats. Where you take periodic times out with God. And just spend and cry before him. And say Lord thank you. That you fast for 100 days does not mean you love God. It can just mean that you are a strong person. Congratulations for that. But it's not equal to intimacy. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're to hold the hand of your neighbor and pray for him and say lord keep your love burning in him keep your love burning in her don't pray for yourself pray for your neighbor lord keep your love burning that's the investment of prayer I'm making for my neighbor whether you're a newcomer or not lord keep your let my neighbor prioritize you my neighbor loves you but you are not such a big deal to him or to her but lord walk on his heart tonight walk on her heart tonight hallelujah hallelujah are you blessed are you blessed these are the mysteries let me teach you one more hmm. the second prize that i want to teach you tonight wherever we stop we'll pray we'll continue next week i'm taking this thing because i really want us to understand the second prize is the price of submission to authority listen the price of submission to authority write it down mm. the price the embarrassing ego stinging but destiny molding price of submission to authority the mysteries that turn people's lives into wonders the price of submission to authority hmm. nobody promotes himself in this kingdom you cannot promote yourself you cannot accredit yourself nobody makes himself a professor 
nobody makes himself a doctor is that true pastor alpha you have supervisors correct mm -hmm. no student marks his project and say i passed correct no in the kingdom listen the system of rising is such that it's not only god that approves you alone men must approve you if not you would never rise listen to me your approval is not just in the hands of god alone it's in the hands of men too mm. jesus knew this that's why he had to look for john the baptist what will the son of god be doing the son of god look for john the baptist for what for what the word that created the heavens and the earth searches for john the baptist when john sees him says he says behold the lamb that's enough to make his head big and say oh so you know then it means i will go back he said no suffer it to be so it's an ordinance it's a secret permit it to be so i know that i created you but suffer it to be so that all scriptures will be fulfilled that there be no legal basis for my remaining small listen i know that god has approved you but have men approved you you will think it does not matter go and find out those who made kings in the bible whether the spirit appeared as a ghost god chose them men anointed them kings is it in your bible how God anointed Jesus, but did, did it come like that? No. Samuel, how long will you weep over Saul, seeing that I rejected him? Go and take your horn. I want to use David, but you have refused to cooperate with me. I have approved him from heaven, but David cannot rise because the man that will pour the oil and approve him refused. God approves a man as a king and on earth the authority to accredit him is still negotiating and because of that that person remains grounded listen Saul the son of Kish was looking for his father's donkey when he met an authority that could approve and he called him he said come go up I will tell you what is in your heart and all of a sudden he anointed Saul and poured oil on him and his life changed whoever lied to you that when you say to hell with men you will prosper the Bible says believe in the Lord your God you want to be established wonderful but if you want to make it in this life brothers and sisters you must submit to God's scriptural pattern of authority your alignment to God's scriptural chain of authority decide how and what flows to you your alignment to god's scriptural chain of authority determines how and what flows to you there are prophets in the bible who were preordained by god to be prophets there were other prophets who were made prophets nowhere in the bible it was never written that they should be prophets amos was not a prophet he was a farmer he was an agriculturist but a man saw him and made him a prophet elisha was not a prophet oh i hope you know that when elijah took his girdle and slapped it on elisha while he was farming elisha started following him the result was that he became a prophet. Agabus, a man in the Bible called Agabus, who gave birth to daughters. The Bible never tells us that they were serious spiritually, but because they were born, they came out of a loin, the loins of a man who, for whatever reason, was a prophet. The old daughters were prophets too. your submission to authority is a mystery that governs promotion ask anybody who is honest enough to admit 
and tell them the day they began to discern authority what happened in their lives that's why you see those who dishonor the body of Christ will never rise you've heard me say this all those who make it a point of duty they insult every man of God they insult every church once it's not your pastor everybody is an object of there is a sin that you can do against the body of Christ a man cannot just sin against God alone you can sin against the body of Christ and the Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man I cannot come and insult a Jimmy's wife and expect him to smile the first understanding of authority is your submission to the body not just to man of God not just to spiritual fatherhood your submission to the body the multifaceted dimension of God that is scattered in the body your ability to acknowledge that the body of Christ is a compendium of infinite possibilities regardless of what your unique biases are when you love the body you are ready to access the deep things in the spirit God will never do business with you when you hate his body there are people who are fasting giants but their cynicism against the body mention any name of any man of God they have something to say mention the, the, that attitude of sarcasm and they wonder why regardless of fasting and prayer nothing comes the body the Bible says for this cause not discerning the body many are weak for this cause many are sick this cause many do sleep as a ministry we have clearly defined our position over the body i love the body of christ you will never hear me open my mouth and talk about any man of god and any ministry it doesn't mean i believe everything i have my reservations but i love the body a wounded bride is still a bride if a woman injures her hand on her wedding day, does it stop her from marrying? That woman you insult every time, called the church, is someone's wife. Submission to the body. Submission to the body. That you discern that this body of Christ is a compendium of possibilities. The blessing of God always comes to you through alignment to authority. The blessing of God, please everyone listen. The blessing of God will always come to your life through alignment. Write this down. I learned this from Dr. Mike Mudok. The primary purpose of authority is provision, protection, and promotion. Write it down. The primary purpose of authority, the primary purpose of authority is provision, protection, and promotion. Provision. When you submit to authority, you have access to the promotion that that authority commands. When you submit to authority, you have access to the protection. We call it a covering. And when you submit to authority, you have access to promotion. Are we blessed? You can never promote yourself you can never accredit yourself listen when you see people submit to authority let me tell you why people hate submission come pastor alpha there are many people what they are doing is pseudo submission you know what we call pseudo submission one leg in one leg out you are not exactly there but you are just there who is this guy well he's a very he's a senior colleague he's just a brother there you are you are you would never rise that way no way God is not a fraud star. You are in it or you are out. I will never forget a gentleman who walked up to me one day and said, Sir, I've been looking at you as if he's toasting me. I've been watching you. I've been watching your life, sir. And, uh, you know, I just feel I need to come close to you. I told this, get out of here. Don't, don't waste my time. 
go and walk on your pride in the secret place when your discernment is complete and you understand that not all human beings are pure human beings then when you submit to a man you don't submit to a body you submit to a system are we together if you fly a plane somebody drives it even if it is your jet somebody drives it the jet is guaranteed to carry you but not all, everybody will be a driver that's how it is in life listen no matter how you fear god and no matter how you love god there are things that you will get based on connection you will pray in the secret place god will refer you to his structure the bible says the church was built in a very strange way it says christ being the chief cornerstone after that he said it was on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets not just by name then the body was built there are certain graces when you don't encounter in your life you will never rise i know this looks like human worship but these are the secrets that other people who are not very smart oh, they just know how to encounter it the body of christ do you have that discernment i've shared with you how we receive the grace for long life we transported the grace of for long life officially and brought it to this ministry yeah i know how we got it when we stopped at that place that border between quara state and equity state there is a strange mystery that goes on there 142 132 125 healthy ah we stopped quickly we went to the baba there we said sir there is a grace for long life here we wanted the man laughed he said kneel down he didn't say are you a pastor because when you go as a pastor you stay outside when you submission demands a stripping of whatever robe or regalia and a an acknowledgement that's what we did on a very good day he says sir i'm just returning from a ministry where there are miracles baba do you know me cannot even speak english we got we had to look for an interpreter and he spoke kneel down jerry young people we knelt down and this man began to speak i told you i met the wife of the 132 year old man who died i think she was like maybe 120 something you would think she's 60 and i told her i said ah when the woman saw she tapped me she said follow me i didn't care where i was going no no matter what i saw i would stay there because i know what brought me there if i was cynical i said madam where are you taking me i'm a born again believer no go there first she showed me the picture of her youth with the 132 year old man afterwards we told her that they've prayed for us but since you are the wife Two have become one the man is dead you are alive so he's still alive and the woman removed her shoes said kneel down ah, what do you think i'll do hey. submission submission let me tell you what many of us will do <laughs> mama just pray is that kneeling down that's pride you are not receiving a sword kneel down One of the biggest enemy of submission is that we think submission is a way of demeaning our own self. Now, truly speaking, do you know there are people who do that? They purposely demean you in the name of submission. That's wrong. There are insecure men and women of God scouting around for anybody they can call son or daughter to increase their accolades not because they understand what they have and they will purposely humiliate you especially in the open to show look jesus was with the people who were submissive to him but you did not even know who jesus was they had to use a kiss to identify him i choose to be like him you don't have to move around and when people are there you say yeah pastor Alpha, shift let them know i'm the one <laughs> when they know you can come back I watch people who hate submission having passion for sons and daughters they hate submission they hate acknowledging authorities 
they come for a meeting and see a, a man of God that deserves honor. Uh, all protocols duly observed. Ah, uh, Pastor Femi, aye. Is that greeting? That is that is that is the attitude of pride that drives grace down. Look, if you're anointed, you're anointed. It's as simple as that. If it's not there, it's not there. Are we together? Authority. I can share with you encounters after encounters. One of the things I love about the leaders and the people in this ministry, and that's why you see that many of them have been able to reproduce this grace, is because they understand submission. Truly speaking, I tell you. I am very proud of the workers in this ministry. I am proud of the heads of department. They understand submission. Submission is not a way of managing a man of God's insecurity. Listen. Never form a team where the loyalty of the people is questionable. Let me give you an advice. If I want to create, come, 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 darling. If I want to establish a company, come. One, two, three, four. If I notice your loyalty is questionable, I will sack you. Go out. Go away. Oh, but you are you are gifted. Just carry your gift and go away with it. You only deal ruthlessly with rebellion. Listen, I'm telling you, people will interpret it as insecurity, but it is irresponsible for a leader to see rebellion and let it go. Deal with it. Are we together? Yes. I will not let anybody to be close to me who does not listen to me and acknowledge the authority of the Lord of, of, on my life over him, I will not. I don't hate you, I won't fight you, but you certainly will not be close to me. You know why? Because you will not receive and you will corrupt the passion of others from coming to receive because they will say you are close. Why are you not getting this result? I says, yeah, this thing, is it not we that are close to them? We, we, we that are, if me, I'm close like this. Have you ever seen me heal the sick? So you should be doubting and I say, ah, you mean it? That anointing is, for, I didn't say he's fake. Oh, I only said, am I not close to him? Why has it not come on me? Take those kind of people out of your life. I'm, I'm talking to you sincerely. Take them out of your life. Anybody that comes close to you, as I, I don't mean everybody, but as somebody, a man of God, or somebody that God has lifted to a measure, not all of them will submit to you in terms of fatherhood, but they should be able to acknowledge what God is doing in your life enough to listen when there is time to listen. Are we together now? You're in worship team here and your music director is talking to you and says, Sir, like I read in the book, mm -mm, keep quiet. You do it again, you do it tomorrow. If I'm you, he will never sing here again. No way. It's more than holding the mic and a good voice. You don't listen. That's how one day they'll say, Sing after two times transpose and you invent your own. Everybody transposes only you and you are just dancing because people are clapping. You are dancing and you mess up. Team spirit only happens when there is an agreement to submit. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That's why many people never rise. All blessings come. They flow from a scriptural chain of authority. A few weeks ago, Pastor Alpha went to stand in for me for a meeting and a number of our people. And after the meeting, one of the mothers there sent me a text and say apostle you have reproduced yourself verbatim in these people and i smiled i said they deserve it they deserve it one of our dear ones here when he was in the school of ministry you know this was somebody that god helped and one time he went towards their graduation time he went to minister somewhere and my goodness it was an experience there was such an avalanche of the presence and the power of god and he returned back he was saying ah this and that and that and i told him when you listen and you submit you have it everybody say submission to authority learn it today learn it we have to stop here but if just doing these two things alone the, the Bible says God called Abraham. He says a lot went with him. Is that in your Bible? Lot did what? 
He didn't say, Abraham said, Lord, let's go. Lord said, I'm going. I'm sure Abraham said, you better go back. And Lord went with him. God called Elijah and Elisha went with him. Elisha had sons of the prophets who paid school fees. And they were receiving lectures from a lecturer. But Elisha said, since I didn't pay anything, I will humble myself and follow. He was the one who poured water on the hands of Elisha. I'm not saying to compel people to worship you. Please don't do that. I, I know that the leaders in this ministry will not do that. Don't just make. There are times that people do some unnecessary worship. You know you have not gotten to the level that demands that. You stop it consciously. Even as I am now. There are things. There are some mothers old enough to be my mother. Old enough. More older than my mother. They will see me and they want to kneel down. I will be stupid at my age and level. To allow a woman kneel down like that. And say she acknowledges me. No. If I try to carry her up and she refuses, I kneel down with her too. That's a wise person. So, fatherhood is not a way of massaging your ego to watch people worship you. While they do it, you make sure the crowd is watching. No. God will punish you for playing with people's lives like that. But brothers and sisters, there are mysterious benefits to submission. One of it is the flow of grace. One of it is the flow of grace believe this oh believe this pastor jimmy was telling me yesterday that he was talking with someone a meeting that i'm going for next year somewhere and then he was talking with the person the person had had me mention his name and he you know they got in touch and he was saying sir i've had apostle talk about you so so much and i was so touched yesterday he's just hearing it now a jimmy was talking to me and he said that he told the man he said sir your life and your ministry is about to shift in a way that you will never imagine when he said it i looked at him i said this is somebody who is my friend he's so close to me but that ability to discern some of you you know why god never lets you come close to a man of god your proximity for familiarity your your propensity for familiarity is too bad Away together someone came one day to see me and when he came he saw me eating corn and he was laughing he needed a something he saw me i was eating corn and he was talking he said yeah you should allow me eat before i pray for him i said don't be foolish didn't you come for prayer does eating the corn does anointing flow through corn or through whatever if if you are coming to listen keep quiet and listen otherwise please walk out of here You can be sleeping on the same bed with your miracle and lack of submission. There is no woman here who should refuse submitting to her husband. Any woman that refuses submitting to her husband, I don't care whether the husband is a man of God or not. Listen, ladies, if you are about to get married, make sure you are willing to submit to your husband. I am not a I am I will not advocate oppressing women I don't do that but all this women alive movement and all this gender equality thing there is a balance to gender equality I don't oppress ladies I have a great deal of honor and respect for ladies but all this nonsense of what a man can do a woman can do also is this deception no I don't look down on women but the correct position of a woman's victory is under authority. Please learn this. Rebellious, noisy, mouth ladies that cannot submit to authority have signed for a life of defeat and pain. Listen, it's true. Submission to authority. That was the problem with Jezebel. It was obvious I have submitted to her and not the other way around. Because it was her that was running the nation. When Eve violated the law of submission, there was access to the serpent. God causes you to submit to protect you. I look at people who are in this ministry, but they are not really connected genuinely because I do not see the grace finding expression in their lives. There are people who have never come here. It's not about coming to lie down the altar necessarily. It's not even about sowing into the life of a man of God, carrying his handkerchief, carrying... Some of those things sometimes can just be ritualistic, really. But the truth of it is a connection. Connection is based... The Bible says as 
as um, face answers to face there is a connection genuine connection genuine honor whether in the secret or in the open you will never sometimes before your hands are ever laid on you you will walk in that grace and reproduce it verbatim why have you not entered certain breakthroughs that you see it is because submission is not genuine submission is not genuine praise the lord first fatherhood but then second a recognition of people that have gone ahead of you you notice sometimes when i'm counseling people when someone comes is talking about issue finance or breakthrough or this I say please go to a jimmy sometimes they can see a jimmy laughing there and they just go and stand this guy and i say you remain poor and broke there because you are not willing to listen this guy you see carries a strange grace for wealth and abundance i've worked with the jimmy for years that grace on him came from his late mother my first genuine watch genuine watch not all those things genuine watch then the mom gave me from uk that watch never spoiled i sold it painfully nobody invents mantles they are transferred so if you ever see it on someone it left somewhere to come there don't trivialize it the men may be young but the mantles are ancient it's like water please help it's like water do you know the water on earth is older than everybody it keeps recycling that means somebody drank it Abraham drank the water you are drinking Isaac because it only recycles the crops can come out. The corn I'm eating, Abraham, they eat it. But the water in the sea? Oh no, come on. That's how mantles are. This healing grace, nobody invents it. Nobody, even if you receive directly from God, to you it was an encounter. But when God shows you the dynamics, it was a connection. I've taught you on systems. Nobody will ever walk on pros in prosperity insulting Kenneth Copeland. Start from anywhere in the world. The mantles keep connecting themselves until it gets to the final person. Kenneth Copeland is not carrying a mantle of work. He is the system on earth to the body that represents that possibility. You want to walk in the anointing and in the healing ministry. Start from any man of God. You keep connecting until it gets to Benihin now currently you see that you don't invent a road that has been found there are people who are millionaires today they are not smart 90% of what we teach in business schools they don't know anything about it but they were just stupid enough to discern there is an ancient mystery I've shared with you my story remember the two women eh, Jimmy? That I bought sugar cane for two women that were wearing tattered dresses. I bought paid sugar cane for them. A woman that cannot afford 50 naira now blesses me and says, My son, forever walk upon gold. That's what the woman told me. Forever walk upon gold. I believe I received a strange, I don't believe that woman was a pure human being. I believe they were angels in disguise. I don't believe that woman was a pure human being. I have had many encounters like that, but this one was strange. <sighs> My life opened overnight. The race is not to the swift. I'm showing you how these systems work in the kingdom. I've shared with you how I went to Canaan land to go and sow a seed to Bishop David Oedipo. When I finished all of that, I came out. When I came out, please help this lady. I came out, I, would, I had already been working in signs and wonders, boarded flights by myself to go and sow a seed to a man of God. Most of you do it, but it's not genuine. You just do it for the sake of it. Listen, more greatness produced from alignment that it will be done from knowledge. 
more greatness will come from alignment in the days to come than it will come from knowledge i will teach you about knowledge i teach you about skill but brothers and sisters there are ancient dimensions that are not subject to just knowledge you can enter a reality before your mind catches up i remember when people i didn't used to work very strongly in the prophetic you no know, here and there god will help me but it wasn't anything serious i remember when I was browsing William Branham, people were lambasting that guy, saying nobody's carrying his anointing, nobody's carrying all these insults, they insult men of God. Be careful. I remember watching his video one night, early in the morning, and I just sat down. Tears were rolling down my eyes. I saw the humility and the compassion from that man. I said, how could people, this guy was a thousand times more humble than me and yet people keep talking about him and all of a sudden i felt it was like something on my head it took like 30 minutes it was coming down the next meeting i went to it was like a joke i started seeing names on people over people's head i said this is strange don't ignore submission you will pay for it i know you went to school but let me tell you there are people who read let me not call the name of any course had that class but were connected to an ancient mantle that can manipulate realities and today they are working in nmpc they've been working in nmpc for decades with a past degree they've been sacking anybody but the grace that brought there still keeps them you would think they've been sleeping around no sir listen before you submit to an authority, discern the graces at work. Discern the forces at work. Discern it. Don't just sit down and say, I am this, I am this. Whether you call, you say, Papa, you say whatever, you will never discern it. Discern it. How you know you are genuinely connected is that the results start reproducing in your life. Sometimes in a shocking way, let me tell you, if we send a dog from koinonia dog d-o-g i carry this handkerchief and tie it on that dog i promise you and i send it for a crusade people will rise up from wheelchairs and the sick the power of god will flow it's not about the dog it's about what is carrying there are some things that are not just based on your personal work are you getting what i'm saying now god said it's the year of triumph he knows that there are many things you don't know and if he's to wait just on some things that you need to know to prosper the natural way will take years before you really understand it but there is a system when he said it there was already a provision but you are refusing to tap into it because of pride pride I see favor every day in my life every day is one thing i know if you ever are looking for the grace for favor and you have been looking around and you are not getting it you are a liar and you are calling god a liar and god will not be happy with you because that grace is more than available it's just that people don't know it There is nothing I'm wearing from my head to my toe that I bought with my money. No, plus my stockings, head to toe. Favor is real. You can sit and argue it in pride. Say it doesn't matter and sit down there. But you can believe and say, but Lord, this is possible. <sighs> Your life changes automatically. Do you believe this thing I'm sharing with you? I've taught you two things today the price to develop intimacy and the price of genuine connection genuine connection genuine connection you come for koinonia here you see manifestations of the spirit there are people like that they have reproduced it everywhere frankly speaking they can tell you i'm in a meeting say i didn't even pray honestly i just said father we give you thanks 
and people started for even then they will go back and say but god thank you for covering for me it's alignment it's alignment when he dedicated the jerusalem temple he turned and said lord whoever faces here he didn't say if he prays well once he turns this direction and he aligns with this direction please hear them so when daniel was in trouble he couldn't depend on his personal work he opened the gates towards jerusalem and said this is a matter of life and death i can't afford to take risk and play with myself hallelujah it is the lord's doing then it is marvelous marvelous go to ida and you you go to you go to destiny makers international pastor alpha's ministry it's like koinonia reproduced verbatim now the shocking part how you know this is grace reproduced is that not all of them have come here let me tell you something about spirit transfer you don't have to learn it the anointing will make you do it are we together now the anointing will make you think in a certain way it will make you understand scripture in a certain way to produce certain outcomes it's a year of triumph because there is a possibility for a transfer there are some things you should never cry about in this ministry one of it is the presence of god one of it is the favor of god one of it is the gift of men one of it is the mantle for honor one of it is revelation and understanding one of it is prayer one of it is influence do you not see the graces flying around looking for those with discernment to receive the stranger comes visits koinonia once and carries that thing and goes back and their life changes there are people listening to me right now from mubi it was i think it was yesterday i got the text when i went there just a few weeks ago i prophesied to them because their roads are bad and i told them i said in the name of jesus i attract the attention of the government here to fix this road just yesterday the governor was there and they commit you, you okay you were there when we got the text the governor came there commissioned the road see let me tell you this thing don't wait till your life gets too bad i know the dimension of the prophetic god gave me it's called the creative dimension of prophecy creation you make things happen you program them in the realm of the spirit you hear people come to testify here it's not just about speaking brothers and sisters don't delay your life by yourself our time is gone but we'll go pray for five minutes rise up everybody can we rise up and pray please rise up and pray rise up we're going to pray prayer point number one father help me to be serious with you genuinely lift your voice and pray please pray Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. I like you to pray genuinely and say, Lord, in any way I have not aligned genuinely, I align by faith. I align by faith. Lift your voice and pray. It's how greatness happens in the kingdom, brothers and sisters. 
through authority, through alignment, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established, believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Hallelujah. I know that our time is gone. Please give me two minutes. Anything that is in your life that you did not see in this ministry, pray it out now and say you must go. Even if you are a visitor, lift your voice and pray. You must leave. You must leave. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must leave. By anointing of the Holy Spirit, you must leave. Are you praying? Are you now see the reason why when we welcome first timers we call them out we don't call them out just to clap for them i know that many churches they just identify them uh -uh. we call them out that little prayer you see in the name of jesus that i say everybody pray i can just pray alone it's not a ritual when i say everybody pray you are a benefactor of an anointing that should come to are we together now when we pray sometimes i say hold hands and let's pray that's the reason why i listen to every message i've told you i don't sit down and do any big manism because the things you hear me preach most times yes i prepared it and all of that but let me tell you the anointing that delivers those things are, is bigger than me i have to go back and listen by myself and receive the prophecy for myself Otherwise, I can be blessing others and never enter certain dimensions. Praise the Lord. Please lift your hands. Our time is gone. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I pray for everyone here, honestly speaking, from the depth of my heart. I pray for you from today I release you into a strange realm of favor a strange realm of favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ receive it right now favor on everything you do I decree and declare the kind of open doors you have never seen I prophesy to your life right now receive it in the name of Jesus I command listen mysteriously some you will not even be able to explain how it happened I command the doors to open now I command the doors to open now I decree and declare the gift of men if men have never risen to help you I place that anointing on your life begin to enjoy the ministry of men enjoy the ministry of men I pray for you the kind of hunger God can put in a man if you have never carried it carry it now hunger is a fire carry it now in the name of Jesus carry it now in the name of Jesus carry it now in the name of Jesus hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands I pray for you whatever makes people trivialize your grace there is a grace for honor and influence it's not by forcing people to honor you Shabakatos Kapariatakata in the name of Jesus everyone genuinely connected to this grace carry that grace for honor carry that grace for honor carry that grace for influence go where your age cannot take you go where your education cannot take you 
go where your family background cannot take you i break every obstacle and i push you forward in the name of jesus lift your hands i pray for your finances in the name of jesus i hold this money in my hand as a point of contact i stretch it towards you in the name of jesus the son of the living god i release you into a dimension of strange wealth i release you now receive it step into it i'm not talking of business suffering wealth by the finger of god i release you into it in the name of jesus i command people you did not do anything for you didn't offer any value for them they will call you and bless you by the strange hand of god in the name of jesus christ lift your hands i pray for you many of you have never you have not seen it but i pray people will no longer just be giving you money i command that they start giving you items properties vehicles i command it believe it that something you would have saved for one year in one day i release that anointing upon you jobs you didn't apply for in the name of jesus the son of the living god i create space for you in the realm of the spirit everything you have tried and tried to do everybody tries it it has made you mark time for years by prophecy move forward now by prophecy move forward now move forward now move forward now hear me any business here that is barren of customers nobody comes you are good you, your products your services right now from tomorrow morning in a strange way i command patronage for your business if there is anyone here you are anointed by god and god has trained you but no open doors for ministration no opportunity to bless people no opportunity for your grace to be recognized i declare let that veil be open now I command men to discern your grace and to take advantage of it. There is a grace in this ministry that leaves shame. I pray for you. Anything that represents shame in your life, quarter to disgrace. May the God that I serve arise and bail you out. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, your family members, right now they are at a point of intense shame if god does not help them the embarrassment will be too much i decree and declare may the god of heaven arise and do a miracle for them in the name of jesus worship him our time is gone thank you jesus please don't mix next week i will be showing you certain things all that deep things but please all through this week as you pray I like you to pray with understanding lord i believe in you i believe in your servant i believe in you i receive what you have released that came through the word that is the word of triumph i receive it write down the things you want to see happen continue your praise over it you may not do it every day but when you have opportunity don't just dance anyhow write the request lord these things must happen before december and i thank you i worship you for it and you watch we are we are doing a strange just cooperate with god and watch what happens in the weeks coming our last miracle service is by the corner we are going to take it in this dimension until it gets to that time it will be fire in this place my goodness my goodness god wants you to testify he wants you to know that he is God. Lift your hands and thank him. Father, we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please keep standing, everybody. 
you are here you are not born again you've never truly given your life to jesus please no moving around you are here you have not truly handed your life to jesus you've seen everything that god is doing you've heard it there are people here who have maybe at one point you gave your life to jesus but things started going around in your life and you're saying man of god i want to run back our time is gone please wherever you are overflow one two three wherever you are online just listen to the prayer and then connect please i want you to make your way come out quickly we have just a minute for this there has to be somebody who wants to surrender to jesus make your way to the front whether you are inside whether you are outside god bless you as you come the spirit of god is bringing someone don't stop them as they come the holy ghost is talking to you please keep standing stand up my brother so that there will be space come come quickly god bless you thank you for your bold decision don't sit back and say god understands no just one minute clear the way for them please if you're coming i want you to rush 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 because i'm going to lead them to pray now god bless you god bless you he's giving you a new beginning i believe there are still people outside i believe there are still people outside don't let the devil cheat you in this culmination of this triumph that god is giving make your way to the front make your way to the front it's a bold decision but i salute that decision god bless you god bless you hallelujah those of you in front i want you to lift your right hand say this after me if you are joining them please come quickly come quickly so that you follow in the prayer say after me lord jesus say it again lord jesus you're joining them join quickly and say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe you died and rose again just for me tonight i hand my life over to you you are my lord and savior i believe in you and i receive your life into my spirit from today i am your child the holy spirit is within me i declare that i walk in victory all the days of my life in jesus name keep your hands lifted i declare your sins forgiven i declare that the hand of god is upon you his life is upon you based on the integrity of scripture i release you to a life of unending victory i command the forces that stand between you and your destiny to give way i declare that your life becomes a testament of glory unfolding glory ever increasing glory the glory that excels in the name of jesus christ amen and amen thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for making this decision a gentleman is waving his hands behind you i'd like you to all turn please turn this way just follow the gentleman smiling at you and then um he'll communicate a few details to you praise the lord now aside from those aside from those going out now if this is your first time worshiping with us wherever you are inside outside we have just a minute for that please i'd like you to gallantly make your way to the front we want to bless you now you understand what we do when we welcome you god bless you make your way to the front dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pa kotos koto pray kate kate kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.